Hi everyone, welcome to another thrilling science experiment Thursday. Um, don't forget to subscribe and comment so I know that you have seen this video. Um, things that you are going to need for this class, this is part two of our biology exploring the world. You're going to need your general supply kit, your journals, your class one baggie, you're going to need this with all these things in it. And you're going to need this worksheet. Alright, for your first activity, you're going to need your science notebook, pen, or pencil, your magnifying glass, scissors, two toothpicks, this container, one paper plate, and the worksheet. So our objective for this class is going to be to investigate different seed dispersal methods by sorting and dissecting seeds. So when scientists sort things into groups to study them, what they call that is classification. So something I want you to think about is how different seeds travel. And so, get out this paper, put this down, and get out your paper plate, and also set that down. And so I want you to look at this, but don't, don't open it yet, don't look at it. Look at these different seeds, and I want you to try to think of how they might travel. And on this paper, it says, for instance here, it says floats on water. There's an example, a coconut. A coconut floats on water. This one says explodes. This one has an exploding cucumber. Other sections are blown by wind, hitches a ride on fur or cloves, or is eaten by animals. And so when seeds are eaten by animals, you gotta think of how is it transferred. Well, when an animal eats a seed, it has to poop it out. And that's how that seed would travel. So I want you to think about all these different things and how they would travel. And so once you've thought about that, I want you to take it and pour it out onto your paper plate. Okay, now that you have these all on your paper plate, I want you to get out your magnifying glass. And I want you to look at all of these because these are all different. And in, in this container, you have also found little pictures. And these are pictures of different seeds. For instance, this one is an apple. And obviously, it's not just the apple. It would be the apple seeds that are inside of them. So I want you to look at each one because these are all very different. They're all very unique. And try to think of where these would go. For instance, I'll give you an example. The apple is something that would be eaten by an animal, possibly. So that would mean that the apple would go into the section that is eaten by animals. And so I want you to try to sort each of these into what section you think that these would be in and one way that you can tell if it hitches a ride on fur or clothes is you have this little cloth or felt and I want you what you can do is you can stick it to something and if it were to stay on that then it probably would hitch a ride on fur or clothes Oh, and just to clarify, um, the only places you um, these seeds that are given would go would be these empty spaces eaten by animals, hitches a ride on for cloves, or blown by the wind. They would not go in floats on water or explode. So only look at these three categories right here. So this is the part of the video where you would pause it so that you can go through this because I'm going to be moving along pretty quickly uh, on to, to telling you where they would go and why. 
Um, so pause the video and examine all of these and put them into what category that you think that they would be in. Alright, I have sorted through mine. And so this picture of the blackberry um, animal would have eaten this. So eaten this seeds. The acorn, the apple. And the tamarind, which is a pod fruit type thing. And the hitches of ride on fur clothes. I got these teaser fur. And the sweet gum burr. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, there you go. Now you can see it. And also these. The blown by wind. Got all these different pine cones, which these pine cones can uh, be blown by the wind or eaten by animals. So they could go in either one with both. I also got the maple seed, the cattail pond pod, and the dandelion seed. And so now what I want you to do is let's take these. Uh, you can leave the pictures. But let's put all these seeds here onto this plate. So what I'm going to have you do next, I'm going to have you get your toothpicks. I'm going to have you get out your scissors and take it out of the packaging and your magnifying glass. And what we're going to do is we're going to dissect all these to look at the seeds. Um, so like this one is the cattail pod. What we can do with this, we can just get the scissors and you can just cut through that. And so watch, cut through it, look at all how fuzzy it is. I want you to just look at all this. So get out your scissors and cut out this cattail pod. And I just want you to write in your notebook just some observations that you have about it. So I'm going to put this, because it's messy, back into the same place that I got it. And you can use your toothpicks kind of look in and poke everything um, and for this thing right here which is the tamarind what you're just going to do is crush it and I already know what you're thinking when you're opening this it does look like a poop but it is not a poop this is actually a type pot or fruit. And so just like look through it. You can poke with it with the toothpicks. Like this it's kind of squishy. You can get out scissors and try cutting it. If you are going to cut it please be very careful. Here we go. Look what I got out. I got out this little thing right here. And the outside is really, really squishy. It's like, hmm, I'm trying to think. If you know what those fruit bars type things are, it kind of feels like that. And so, this has like many different layers into it, um, so it's good to have these toothpicks because you have this fruit layer and you can use your toothpick to just peel that off. And so just make some observations on all these, um, what you're noticing. 
Um, for the pine cones, which you can do, honestly, you could just break it. But I want you to try to look to see if you can find the seeds or the pouches in them. Notice how the different ones, uh, different pine cones, how they look different, how their pouches or seeds may look different. Um, yeah, just look through all this and write down everything in your notebook. So, after you're all done, I want you to think of what did you find? Did anything surprise you? Did all the seeds look the same? Did they look different? And um, yeah, just look at all these. Um, do you think that all seeds just drop straight down or why don't they? Um, so after you're done, I want you to wash your hands because you will have a bunch of stuff on you. And um, that one seed is this one. It's really sticky. So, um... So since plants can't move like animals, they have to rely on their seeds to move for them. Seeds are small objects from plants that can grow into a new plant, kind of like plant eggs. Seeds need the right conditions to grow into a plant. These include water, air, the right temperature, soil, sunlight, and space. There are many ways for seeds to travel. Some seeds, like dandelions, and maple um, helicopters, like this one, have fluff or wings that are carried by the wind. Some plants grow f fleshy fruit that animals eat, which help disperse the seeds. The seeds pass through animals' digestive tract and germinate. They start to grow, and after they come out of the animal's poop, the seeds from berries um, apples and even coffee are dispersed this way. In Madagascar, ring-tailed lemurs provide this service for tamarind seeds. Some non-fleshy fruits like thistles or sweet gum are adapted to be carried on animals' fur. You might have returned from a walk in the woods and you'll find burrs stuck to your socks. These burrs are actually specialized fruits designed to carry seeds to new places. That's not the only case in which animals help seeds without getting anything out of the deal. For instance, squirrels often hide acorns to save them to eat later. Sometimes a hidden acorn, like this one, they end up in a place with good growing conditions, and it turns into a plant before the squirrel even comes back for it. It's all a part of oak tree's seed dispersal method, just not what the squirrel had in mind. Look, I took this one apart. Some seeds float and are carried by water, like coconuts, and others can't germinate without fire. One of the most exciting methods of dispersal is explosive. The exploding cucumber is a fruit filled with growing liquid and seeds that put more and more pressure on the plant. Once the pressure builds high enough, the cucumber explodes off the stem, rocketing away from the plant while the seeds spray out behind it. All right, so if you have any questions um, that I did not answer, write them down in the comments and I'll be sure to answer those for you. Um, and we're going to move on to our next project. So what I need you to get, paper plate. This is going to be in your Science One bag where you'll find this. I need you to get out your gloves. Tweezers. Two toothpicks. palette which is wrapped in foil and also want you to get out this worksheet which is rodent skeleton um, 
out your general supply kit. I want you to get out pencil, pen, your science notebook, your magnifying glass. One of these, this is called a pipette, and I want you to get this out. And a cup. I want you to get all these out. And um, if you have not washed your hands after this, uh, please do that now. So I want you to get your cup, and I want you to fill it about one fourth of the way. So um, if half of your cup is this much, one fourth is half of half. So about this much, I want you to fill with water. Alright, so we just dissected some seeds, and now we're going to be dissecting something called an owl palette. It, has anybody heard about an owl palette, or know what it is? Um, if you think you know what it is, write it down in your notebook. If you don't know, but you have a guess, write it down in your notebook. Um, I'll let you do that. Alright. So, owls eat their prey, um, other smaller animals, whole. And there are parts that owls can't digest, like the bones and the fur. These parts are compacted into a tightly packed pellet. And then the owl coughs them up, similar to a hairball. So that is what an owl pellet is. And so something you might be thinking is, is owl pellets, is it owl poop? No, it is not. So an owl pellet is basically, it's like a hairball, like they coughed up the hairball, like a cat will do. Um, owl pellets are regurgitated, like throw up, like ugh. So that's what this is. So I'm going to have you put on your gloves. And this is one size fits all, so these are big even for me. But what you're going to do is push them as far as they can go. And then I'm going to have you out of the foil. Unwrap it, and you have your plate right underneath you and you're going to set it on there once you finish unwrapping it. Alright, so this is my owl pellet. Alright, so now that you have this, you're going to get your toothpicks and you're going to get out your tweezers and you're going to try to dissect it. And so, don't be shy. You can use your hands too. It might be a little bit difficult with the gloves on. Just try, just take it apart gently. And different things you're going to find. You're going to find lots of bones. What I'm finding right now, like right here, I'm finding some sort of fur, hair from something and if if you're having a really difficult time you can see I found I found some bones but if you're having a real rough time that's why we have this right here this glass of water in this pipette and so what you can do is you're gonna put this in the water you're gonna squeeze the top it'll make some bubbles and then you release it and out some water. So don't drench it in water, just add just a little bit and what this little bit of water is going to do is just make it a little bit easier for you to dissect. Oh, okay. I believe I just found a head. And these don't smell the best, obviously. 
But yeah, I want you to all just dissect this, look through it, see if you notice anything weird, and try to think of what animal these bones might be from. And so if it gets if it gets rough again for you to dissect, remember just add a little bit of water. And see that one came right out. Water helped. This is another skull. So you're going to notice on this worksheet that you have, it's going to say large bones found in owl pellets, pelvis, humerus, femur, shoulder blade, ulna and radius, tibia and fibia, ribs, skull, lower jaw, and vertebrae. So I want you to go through, look at this as you're dissecting and try to see if you can identify which these which of these bones are if they're a pelvis a humerus a tibia or maybe just a skull all right so i have dissected through mine and i have found many different bones uh this bone right here that i have found which you can't really see in the video uh in this camera but i found right here is a humerus and then right here I have found a pelvis Oops. I have found a skull I have found a lower jaw and I have found where'd it go I did find some ribs there's some ribs so. don't forget that you can use your magnifying